Okay. Hello, Internet. I'm here today to name my channel. Try to say something fundamental about who I am and what I believe. And how I choose to live. And that choice and that title is Hug Your Monsters. Hug Your Monsters. There's this thing with monsters where we see them as monsters and then we tend to very much want to run away or to kill them. And then when they don't die, to kill them again. Because, I mean, if at first you don't succeed, then try staking them in the heart, shooting them with a silver bullet, setting them on fire. Decapitation often works, but not always. Because the thing about monsters is that for the most part, attempting to kill your own fears or demons never really works. Which is why horror movies get it absolutely right when the monster doesn't die the first or the second or the third time you kill them. You can't kill your fear by killing it. At some point in my life, I realized that my very favorite art tended to be about monsters. And my favorite version of my favorite kinds of art about monsters tended to be the versions where they didn't kill the monster. Or at least not all of them. Or at least the whole point wasn't just to kill the monster. Maybe because the monster was the hero. Maybe because the show had some more nuanced view of monsters besides to kill, kill, kill. Either it was told from the monster's point of view at some point, such as Angel or Frankenstein or Beauty and the Beast. Or over the course of the story, the previously simplistic take on monsters, monster bad, kill monster, eventually grew more complicated, more nuanced, more interesting, more aware that usually the things we call monsters are just A, other people that we're afraid of and don't know, B, scary things inside us that we don't know what to do with or don't understand or feel ashamed about. In Buffy the Vampire Slayer, for example, over the years, and much to the chagrin of some people, we met good vampires good demons. We met, in other words, the other. The other out there, the other in here. And what we discovered was, hey, monsters are people too. What we learn from those kind of stories, my favorite kind of stories, what I love about these stories is that they teach empathy for even our worst fears, our worst faults, our worst flaws, our, our worst biases, our worst prejudices. And in so doing, they teach us how to connect with the things we don't understand, rather than react in the fairly common human way of reacting, which is, Thing, thing I don't understand and so fear and so now you must die, die, oh god, why won't you die? Which, you know, is, is less smart in the long run. I mean, the monster is always going to come back as long as your best plan is kill the monster. As a storyteller, here's the thing about monsters I always come back to. I would rather my characters not so much kill their monsters as listen to them. Maybe give them a hug. Which isn't to say that all our problems and all the monsters in the world, metaphorical or literal, can be solved by just giving them a hug. It's not simply about loving your monsters or are trying to live the way the monsters in your life or in you want you to live, but it is about seeing and connecting with the monsters, the ones out there, the ones in here. Because yeah, monsters are people. They live inside you and they live inside me and they live inside our institutions they're everywhere and they may just be metaphors but metaphors can feel pain too yeah, at least you know metaphorically speaking so long internet see you next time ttfn hug your monsters <laughs> hug your monsters hug your monsters <laughs> or, or or for the or that okay i'm gonna talk at it so i sound loud but i'm just talking to the the thing because I just thought I'll make a little thing that's like oh if, if everything looks different because I'm at my sister's house for like post holiday holidays so that's why everything looks different than where I usually am which isn't here which is in London and England in my flat uh, so that's that's this that's a cool poster back there